Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world. Well, it's natural, supernatural. There's something new happening on planet Earth. Muslims in extremely large numbers are having visitations of Jesus, and many are going to heaven. Many are having dreams and visions. The, the, the most phenomenal thing is happening, and when they get mature in God, they're not normal American Christians. They move in the most extraordinary signs and wonders and miracles, and we have two with us that you're going to hear from. By the time you finish hearing the second one, you will not be upset about anything going on in your life. That is the rarefied air of heaven on this program. It makes it different from anything you've ever seen before. My guest was born in uh, Pakistan. His name is Fasil Malik. Islam was his whole life, hours every day. He would study the Quran. He came to Canada. He got involved in uh, network marketing. But still, Islam was his whole life. He went to one of their meetings. It was a big meeting, 20,000 people. And he was told if he goes to the first meeting, he'll be in the front row for the second meeting with these top experts in network marketing. So he says, I'll do it. He didn't know it was a church service. And, and then he came to his senses. He says, oh, I see what they're doing. They're using this network marketing to market Jesus. I'm going to observe what they do, and I'll do the same thing for Islam. And so he goes to his third meeting like this, and they say, stand up to accept Jesus as their Messiah. And he stands up out of respect, and all of a sudden, Vassal, <laughs> the last thing in the world you expected, what happened? Well, suddenly, God showed up. I didn't know this was even possible. And I remember standing there, and his presence went right through me, went right around me. I was completely surrounded with the presence of God. And I had all these questions going through my heart and mind, like, what is going on? How is this possible? Uh, first of all, I didn't understand why God would even manifest amongst the people that I thought were blaspheming him by worshiping Jesus. And so this is going through me, and I'm in his presence, and all these questions are disappearing, except one question that was burning in my heart. And I said, God, what are you doing here? I thought, these are the bad guys, meaning the Christians. And then I heard an audible voice, and he said, no, these are my children. And he said it again, no, these are my children. And a third time, no, these are my children. And when he said that, it was like everything I'd experienced as a Muslim, all that I'd ever known about God, immediately was gone. And I was only conscious of one reality, that Jesus, you are the Son of God. Okay, let me take you now to February 24th. Uh, you experienced the river of God's love. Tell me about that. I never knew God could actually come in to see an individual. I always thought he showed up in large crowds like that meeting. <laughs> and so here I was uh, uh, at 7.30 in the morning, the tangible presence of God, the reality of God just began to fill that entire basement of the basement I was living in. And it got stronger and stronger and stronger. And I sensed a tangible river go right through my being. It was nonstop, like, you know how a river, a waterfall, You're just right. flowing like so powerfully. And, and it's, but it's love, it was life, it was something 
substance. It was something I'd never experienced, and it's going right through me nonstop for three hours. And I remember hearing this beautiful, audible, yet authoritative voice, and this was the voice of our Father, Father God. And He said, I love you, son. I love you, son. I love you, son, three times. Yeah, but you must have known that within Islam. No, actually, all my life, Sid, I never heard those words growing up as a Muslim. I never remember hearing the words, I love you. I remember hearing, I wish you weren't born. I remember hearing things like that. But something in those words, when he said, I love you, son, that began to do something to me. I didn't even know how to respond except by saying, I love you, Father. I love you, Father. It was this exchange of, of you, supernatural Father. love in the form of a river tangibly. And, and all I can tell you is the fruit of it. Three things happened as a result. Number one, I had a love and an intense hunger for the Father. I had a love for God I didn't have up till that point in my life. And number two, I had more love for people. You know, we we're all growing in love, so I suddenly sensed I love people more than I did up till that moment. And the third thing was, I had a love and a hunger intensely for the Word of God. And I remember picking up the Bible, and for 36 hours, supernaturally, I read through the entire Bible. I couldn't eat anything. I could only digest the Word of God, and it was supernatural in that when I would look at the page of the Bible, literally a page or a passage at a time would almost lift off the page, go inside of my spirit, and I, and I understood what it was saying. I knew exactly what was being happening. I didn't know what to call it, but that was revelation. That God began to write His Word upon my heart, and I began to have a revelation of God's realities, His truth, and began to apply them in my life. That's but, how but it started. You, you know what's the most amazing thing to me? Just about everyone he talked to, this river that he had in him of liquid love started going out of him and touching some like 1,500 people. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Pastor Tony Kemp went 26 years without seeing any major miracles in his ministry. Then he logged on to our ministry website, SidRoth.org, and began watching archive programs of It's Supernatural for five to eight hours a day. It was like going to a school for the supernatural. He was being mentored, and he received one impartation after another. Miracles began to happen in his ministry. The crippled walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. People with all kinds of diseases are healed. Others receive missing body parts. Some experience supernatural weight loss. Jesus said, you shall do greater works than I do. Why don't you do what Tony Kemp has done? Log on to SidRoth.org and begin watching our archives of It's Supernatural TV programs. It's free. Get ready to receive an impartation from God so you too can begin to walk in the supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here, and I am so excited to be speaking to you. Do you know why? Because I have got two former Muslims that have had such encounters with the living God. I am so impressed with so many of the people that are from Islam that are having encounters with God, and as fervent as they were for Islam, they're even more fervent once they come to know the love of God. They, 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 they believed in God within Islam, but they never knew the love of God. Fasil, uh, tell me about Camille. By the age of five, he was already dreaming about killing infidels, Israelites, and Americans. At the age of seven, he joined the PLO, and they taught him how to use an AK-47, and he started his terrorist career. And he started training children and taking them into the Golan Heights in Israel and, you know, smuggling ammunition and TNT and bombs and explosives uh, to have, you know, bomb threats and killings to go on. That's what he was doing at that young age. And that was his passion. That's how he grew up. And it's absolutely amazing through the journey how God really touched him. Uh, but he was involved in a horrible uh, automobile uh, accident, and a doctor felt sorry for him because he was now uh, in America. <laughs> he came to America uh, to uh, win as many people to Islam as possible. Uh, and, and by the way, I found it interesting. They, uh, they use women 
yes. to win. To, to win. Yeah. Kamal explained how he was trying to commit what they call cultural jihad. So he'd come to America and he's, you know, they 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 find women to marry so they could get their citizenship or resident cards or whatever they needed, and they would spread Islam through their families. And this is the kind of journey he was on. He would also visit the poor. He'd also meet uh, meet African Americans. They, these are all part of their strategies through which they felt to spread Islam. And then he had this accident that you referred to, and it was absolutely right. Well, this doctor. Uh, took a liking to him. <laughs> I mean, it's, the, the guy is there, really, he hates everyone, uh, but they took a liking to him. They took him into their home with their children, and the children just, he couldn't handle it. The children loved him. They love-bombed him. Uh, <laughs> let, let's go to him speaking in his own words. <laughs> and now, these little kids put their little hand on me and started doing the Jesus prayer. I was trained to fight anything in life take down any big giant. But those little loving hands that laid, touched my hand, melted my heart. There was a war inside of me. These men would come once a week, will make a hole, uh, will make a, a circle around me, and they put me in the middle of, and they pray that God may heal me, that God may bless me, that God may light shine his face upon me, that God can bless me and they doing this in the name of Jesus. Now I came to this understanding that these people are not the bad people that I thought that they are. Allah, these people have relationship with their God. I want to have relationship with you too. I want to hear you saying that you love me. I want to know. I want to know you. If you are real, speak to me. Now bear in mind these men and women they pray for healing and receive healing. They pray for breakthrough, they receive breakthrough. They pray and ask and they, I hear them saying, I heard God said this and this. I'm going, I wanna have that relationship. If this is real, I wanna have it because I've been worshiping Allah all days of my life and I earned it. You know, Kamal got so frustrated because his God wouldn't love him like these Christians had the love. His God wouldn't even speak to him. Nothing. So he got so desperate, he decides to commit suicide. Uh, what happened next? Well, he pulls out his gun and he's getting ready to shoot himself and he hears this voice and the voice says very gently, Kamal, Muslims worship the God of Abraham and pray to him. Jews pray to the God of Abraham and Christians pray to the God of Abraham. Why don't you pray and call on the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? So he said, okay, well, this, this, uh, let me give this a try. So he says, oh, God, of Abraham, God of Abraham, if you are real, show yourself, show yourself reveal, yourself, reveal yourself, to yourself to me. And suddenly, this light began to fill his room, this glory, he says, come into the room, and Jesus walked right into the room. And he said, who are you, Lord? Kind of like Paul said, and he heard Jesus say to him, I am that I am. And he says, what is that supposed to mean? He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And that is where he got so touched by Jesus, he got instantly healed. His, his neck, his collarbone, his bones, yeah, severe, instant. I mean, he was so severe that he couldn't function himself. He, he could not, but instantly he was healed, huh. and he felt this liquid fire and love go through him, and he was supernaturally healed at that very moment. Okay. Before you came on the set, you told me God spoke to you today. What did he say? Sid, there's been so many hatred, so much hatred demonstrated to the Jewish people from my brothers and my sisters, the Muslim people all over the world. And there's been dishonor towards the Jews and hatred. And I really felt to ask you, because you are Jewish and you know and love the Messiah, I feel God spoke to me to ask you that if you would forgive my brothers and sisters, my people, for the atrocities, the dishonor, and the hatred that has been shown to the Jewish people. And God spoke to me and said, if you do this, that millions of Muslims will experience salvation all over the world, and so many Jews will experience and know who the Messiah is, because God's heart is the Jew and Gentile, Jew and Muslim, through the cross, become one new man and experience him in one body. And I really believe there's something significant is supposed to happen here. I believe I'm supposed to ask you. So I want to ask you, would you forgive us for what we have done? I have to tell you something. I have done some pretty despicable things myself, and God has forgiven me. And who am I to not offer forgiveness because of what God has done to me? 
And I totally forgive you for everything you've ever done to any Jewish person, everything you've ever said against my nation, Israel. I totally forgive you because of the blood of Yeshua who has forgiven me and because that blood of Yeshua is available to you right now. We'll be right back with one of the most amazing Muslims I have ever met in my life. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! For he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself, to create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Adin novi chlavek. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to. It's supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Kalita Wurkowitz. Now, Kalita is a Palestinian Arab, and I have never heard. I don't know how you survived, Kalita. I, I mean, and you have a smile on your face, but, but let, let me tell you a little bit about Kalita. When she was 11 days old, her mother died, her father abandoned her, and she was put into an orphanage. And she stayed in this orphanage till age nine. She went out to get some water to drink, uh, and a bomb hits the orphanage, and her whole new family wiped out. And then, Somehow, they didn't know what to do with her, and, and, and you're just nine years old, and they sell you as a slave to Bedouins. And you were, you, you were worse than a slave. Uh, they would beat you. The, you know, the only food you had was leftovers. Um, and the soldiers finally rescued you, uh, and, and they put you in another orphanage, and then they found your natural father, but he didn't want you. I mean, rejection, rejection, rejection. How much rejection can a human get take? I, I mean, I don't know how a human can have that much rejection. Um, and, and then uh, your father makes you a slave. Uh, he doesn't want you. Um, uh, he, and at age 15, he forces her into a marriage. Uh, the husband, after a while and after a, a child, uh, kicks her out, divorces her, horrible shame. Her father still wants to get rid of her, uh, so uh, he, he gets rid of your only child, and he marries you off again to a man. You go to the United States, and this man, I mean, it, 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 according to my notes here, he broke your jaw. Why did he do that? Well, uh, he was an angry man, and um, he was my husband. And in Islam, they teach men that they need to correct their wives. So he was just giving me a good lesson, and it was uh, very good to break my jaw. Mm. I didn't learn anything, by the way. I'm sure. <laughs> OK, so yeah, yeah, you have three children. You're married to an abusive husband again. I don't, I don't get it. How could you take all of this? Not just him. Your whole life, how did you do it? Well, I was going crazy. You know, before the I'm Lord, sure. I was going crazy, uh, but the grace of God. He, then it gets worse. He lets her know he's going to kill her. What did you do about that? Um, there is, no, you know, I, I needed to run away. I needed to run for my life. Yeah, I was. You, you actually life. heard a voice. I heard a voice. Um, I remember, like I told you, try, uh, trying to kill myself before I heard that voice, and then I heard an audible voice saying to me, "Leave the darkness." into the light. Um, now, I thought I'm going crazy anyway, but might as well. I'll follow that voice. I'm not going to lose anything uh, on okay, what but, I love. But, but, but what does a woman do that doesn't speak English, uh, doesn't have money, and has three small children wandering the streets? What happened to you? Um, I met a Christian lady that took me in as her own daughter and told me about the love of Jesus. But you? loved 
Islam. You really did love Islam. I did. I, so, I was so, how, so you loved this woman for what she did for you, right. but you didn't want her Jesus. Exactly. And my conflict was always how God, you know, how can I uh, believe that God have a son? Because they taught us in Islam that God cannot be weak and have a son. That's a sign of weakness. So I struggled with that. I, I wanted to have the love that woman had, and that was the breaking point. I, I saw her joy, I saw her love, I saw her life being symbol, but she was always uh, connecting to God, and I was hungry for that. And, and then you decide, uh, this, this is the moment, I want to know the truth. Tell me what your prayer was and what happened. Um, I remember feeling sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I remember um, praying, asking uh, Jesus, if you really, uh, who you are, what people say you are, because I didn't know if it's true or not, really. If people say uh, that you are the Son of God, then show me, then come to me and show me that you are the Son of God. And I didn't think anything was gonna happen out of that prayer, but uh, the result of that simple prayer was, Jesus appearing to me and have an encounter with the Lord in the supernatural. Uh, that would have been enough, but <laughs> then she goes on to heaven. What did you see in heaven? I saw uh, the uh, worship. I saw how much heaven adores Jesus as the Son of God, exalts him as a king. Uh, uh, some of the things I saw that babies, people, uh, beings were throwing a crown at the feet of Jesus. Uh, he was strong and majestic. You, you didn't know this was in the Bible? There, I didn't know. I never read this. the Bible before I had that experience. All I knew is what I'm seeing have to be real because it was so vivid and it was so real, and I became part of heaven. There is no way you could deny it. One thing in heaven is, uh, Jesus is the word of God, and as you look upon his face, and his light, and his glory, revelation becomes so vivid and so real, you cannot escape it. Well, well, you you know just know cannot what's, run from it. You know what's so exciting to me? Is she now prays for people? and they get miracles, people with cancer get healed. But what is more exciting to me is some of the revelation she learned about worship. And she is a worshiper of God like you've never seen before, like you're going to see because you are going to become a worshiper of God. I am going to ask Kalita to worship God the way you do in your home, when no one's there but God. And some of you in the audience and some of you in the audience at home, I want you to worship God. And if you'll do this, God's going to show up. Would you worship God right now? Yes. I, I want to look people right in the face and tell them that there is power in speaking in your heavenly language. There is power. It's, the Bible calls it perfect embrace to God. You cannot go wrong. Um, the fact that we are created to worship him, when we enter into that with faith, then he must show up, and the Bible says he will inhabit his praises. Right now, just as yes. if you're in your home, worship yes. God. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 And I want to speak it in English, what I was saying, what I was sensing in my spirit is exalting Jesus above everything, above your circumstances, above your divorce, above your struggle, above your sickness, above your diseases, above everything that you're dealing with, even on a daily basis. You exalt that king above all of your circumstances, and I guarantee you, you will have experience like Hagar had with God, many people in the Bible, like us Muslim, as we exalt Jesus, 
we become a true worshiper of God and we truly submit to the Spirit of God because that is our weapon of welfare. No way you could lose ever a battle for God if you worship Him in spirit and in truth. There is no religious freedom in Islamic nations. There is a total blackout of anything Christian. One cannot carry a Bible on the street or have a Bible study in the privacy of their own home. The death penalty is imposed on any Muslim who converts to Christianity. In spite of this, millions of Muslims throughout the world are now experiencing supernatural encounters with Jesus in dreams, angelic visitations, heavenly visions, miracles, signs, and wonders that result in their becoming on-fire Christians. Now you can receive an impartation to experience the same supernatural outpouring from heaven that they are walking under. Call now and get two copies of Fassel Malik's life-changing book, 10 Amazing Muslims Touched by God, one for you and one to give away, plus this anointed two audio CD set, East Meets West, both yours for a gift of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9150. Many nights as I was writing and editing and working with the stories, trying to write the commentary, I'd be up weeping all night because I was so touched by the presence and the power of God by hearing their stories and just connecting with how God touched them. And and it would provoke me into even a deeper passion and a love for Jesus. And so this is the power behind this book, and I really believe it's going to touch your life. In this two-part audio CD series, East Meets West, you will learn the secrets that these converted Muslims have discovered concerning the supernatural of God, began to experience heavenly dreams, angelic visitations, signs and wonders, and supernatural healings. You will receive an impartation of faith to believe God for the impossible, sense the reality of God's presence like never before. You're going to learn those insights, those keys, and those secrets, and be able to apply them to your life so that you can grow and mature in the things of God, operate in the supernatural, and truly deeply be touched by the presence of Jesus. I will promise you something. You will never be so moved in your life as when you read this book. There are insights into the supernatural, just the fervency that they have. It's going to so open you up to the supernatural, especially their secrets in the two CDs, East meets West. Wait till you see the mysteries. It's going to cause the same thing that happened to them. I'm talking about dreams, visions, going to heaven, moving in miracles, signs, wonders. It's going to happen to you. Don't miss out on getting two copies of Fassel Malik's life-changing book, 10 Amazing Muslims Touched by God, one for you and one to give away, plus this anointed two audio CD set, East Meets West, both yours for a gift of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9150. Call or you can write to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9150 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or right today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest should have been a basket case. She had such trauma in her life that what you had is nothing compared to what she went through. And supernaturally, she was taught how to get the clutter out of her.